When Ahmed Ahmed was elected as CAF's new president, he appointed the youngest secretary general in the history of the organization. The late 34-year-old Egyptian Amir Fahmy was the third generation of the Fahmy family to occupy the position. However, he fell out with Ahmed when he exposed the corruption in his administration. Fahmy died from cancer before he could witness FIFA convicting the CAF president. Here is CGTN's Adel Al Marui once again with more details. After less than two years of service in CAF, Amr Fahmi was stunned by the magnitude of financial violations he saw Ahmed Ahmed falling into. Fahmi has inherited the secrets of the organization since Hayatu and had hoped to create positive change with Ahmed. When he realized CAF was following a corrupt path, he blew the whistle. Amir Fahmi had a major role in exposing Ahmad's corruption, which erupted very quickly. Mohamed El Sheri assisted Fahmi as well. He was the financial director at the time. Together, they filed corruption accusations to CAF and French authorities. This is when Ahmad moved to eradicate both of them from CAF. Fahmi sent an email to FIFA and CAF officials. Attached was a dossier that included Ahmed's financial dealings. The allegations included spending hundreds of thousands of dollars on lavish cars and a remote office for the Malagasy at his home country. He documented tens of thousands of dollars sent to personal accounts of African Association presidents. The late Secretary General's first televised interview about these mind-blowing accusations was with CGTN. In it, he named some of the people he believed are involved in violating FIFA's code of ethics. Morocco, they are not talking. Morocco, the president is involved in the corruption. Egypt, the president, the former president, because he just resigned, was involved in the corruption. Nigeria, he was trying to be opposition. He did not fight for his right. South Africa, he used all this to become the third vice president. He did not look at the interest of his country, he did not look at the interest of his continent. Thanks to Fahmi, the French authorities were the first to question Ahmed, specifically regarding a deal with a little-recognized sports equipment company called Tactical Steel. Ahmed directly gave them a contract almost four times more expensive than an offer from Puma for just 50% more items. Back then, Ahmed dismissed the allegations, claiming he was increasing CAF's revenues. He made 20%. What was the number of games of the AFCON in 2017? It was 32 games. The increase of revenue should be 60%. Why? Because we went from 32 to 52. That was my negotiations back then, with like at Despar, but I was put on the side because of some issues. <laughs> so 25% is nothing. If I, get, if I get my assistant to do the job, he'll get more than 25%. If I was still general secretary that has his own, if, I, if, I, if I'm working in another confederation and I have this, I would get you 100%. After two audits, FIFA's adjudicatory committee has convicted Ahmed this week. Falling ill to cancer was Amr Fahmi's wake-up call. He realized that silence equaled compliance. It was a tiring journey for the youngest secretary general CAF has seen. Unfortunately, the disease took his life before he sees the day when Ahmed became guilty. Ahmed is appealing against FIFA's conviction, but until these investigations are over, he is out of the Confederation's presidential race. Meanwhile, both CAF and FIFA are refraining from commenting on the investigations as they are still ongoing. But many are expecting that more members in CAF would be included in this corruption scandal. Adel Mahroui, CGTN, Cairo. All right, let's get more insight on the leadership crisis at the Confederation of African Football. And we are pleased to have CGTN's Adel Al Marui, who joins us now from Cairo. Adel, great to have you with us on Sports Scene. Let's get straight into it, Adel. Mr. Ahmed has elected to appeal the FIFA ban from precedents. Not many have succeeded in overturning such decisions. Does he stand a chance, Adel? Let's have a list of um, the accusations Ahmed Ahmed has been convicted from uh, FIFA about, and that's not 
something common to see that FIFA's um, uh, investigative uh, committee reach a uh, conviction for someone. Uh, he is uh, accused of violating the duty of loyalty um, to a football offering and accepting gifts and other benefits, abuse of position, misappropriation of funds, um, and there is also uh, now reports about looming sexual abuse scandal or sexual harassment scandal uh, for the um, president, uh, the former president, uh, or the suspended president uh, of camp. These are a lot of accusations, most of which he has been convicted with already. Does he have a chance? It doesn't appear so. And there are already bank transfer accounts with um, thousands of dollars that have been transferred into other uh, accounts within um, the um, football um, community in Africa. Um, there are multiple financial transactions of getting, for example, um, um, lavish vehicles for, with more than 470,000 US dollars, just three vehicles with that amount. That's besides more than $700,000 uh, in fright um, um, transportation for items in the suspicious uh, deal that he had uh, directly given to Tactical Steel, the French company. So it doesn't seem that he stands a chance. However, we have to wait uh, and see how FIFA's um, reopening re the investigation because of his appeal will follow. All right, Adele, there's no question. There are a long list of accusations there. You know what they say, no smoke without fire. Uh, I guess it's going to be tough to beat, but let's see what happens. That brings me to my next question. Our former CAF General Secretary, the late Amir Fahmy, first blew the whistle on alleged corruption at CAF. You spoke to him before his demise. Has he been vindicated posthumously? Well, so far it appears so. Um, at least um, this is what he has been um, aiming for since the beginning. Uh, Amr Fahmi, when I spoke to him uh, during the interview that we've seen part of it months back, um, he clearly said that he didn't want anyone to go to jail. He just wanted the corruption to stop. He wanted the bleeding of, food, of African football money to stop and use these funds to develop the sport even further. This is the potential he has seen. Um, so in terms of FIFA's um, um, accusations and um, conviction, um, he has been vindicated, uh, but still we, are, we have to wait for what will happen, what is going to happen in the appeal for Ahmed Ahmed. Also, let's not forget about the sum of the um, as, uh, football associations that he has um, clearly mentioned um, during my interview uh, with him. Uh, we've seen already after Ahmed has um, sacked Amr Fahmi from his position as Secretary General, he started to get closer to um, the Moroccans uh, in general. So why is that? I think this is a valid question that we need to think about. Um, is he guaranteeing their silence? Is there other things that need to be revealed to um, 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 explain um, the, the, the relations between him uh, and the Moroccan Federation. That's also a big and a valid question that also needs to be answered. So uh, I believe um, partially he has been dictated, but uh, we have to wait until all um, the figures that represented this um, obviously big calf um, sc uh, corruption scandal re become revealed. All right, Adel El Marui, as always, thank you for speaking to us here on Sports Scene, my friend. Thank you so much for your insights.